All right, and we are live. Welcome back, everybody, for another episode in the Playing to Win series. This is number 31, and I'll be joined today uh, with a gentleman who has been in my community for a while. Uh, he's a longstanding great member. He's also a guy that we've uh, done a collab with before. Um, he basically helps guys level up, and he's been doing it for quite a while. He's got a bit of an interesting origin story himself. So I'm really looking forward to bringing him on. So without any further ado, let's add him to the stream. We've got Xander Woodford Smith with me. How you doing, brother? I'm great, thanks, Rich. How are you? Amazing. Um, I'm really pleased to have you here today because uh, you've got some. You're probably one of the top guys in my men's community with uh, interesting shares and feedback, and you're always a contributor, and you do take some great, useful tips from everybody as well. But um, let's do like a little bit of your Batman origin story. We'll spend about 10, 10, maybe 15 minutes on where you've come from. Cause then, cause it'll kind of segue into the unplugging of, you know, the old, uh, beta conditioning to the unplugged alpha that you've become as well today. So lay it on us. Who are you? How old are you? Where do you live right now? You know, kind of give us a rundown of how you got here. Cool. Yeah. So um, in a second, maybe I'll share the screen, Rich, as well, just so when I'm saying some numbers, yeah. it's not just make-believe stuff. I'll show you some screenshots and places. But um, right now I'm 31, so it works out well. This is episode 31. I'm 31. Um, I'm living in Cape Town, South Africa, but basically I can live anywhere in the world. As long as I've got my laptop, my uh, business runs, um, multiple businesses, and um, it just depends how far back you want me to go in terms of the origin story. Yeah, let's talk uh, really. about schooling and your tennis career because, I mean, you were a professional athlete at one point too, practically, right? Yeah, I was. Um, so I'd been very good as a junior. Like I was North of England champion, got to play at Wimbledon with Tim Henman and things like this. And then I got really ill. And this is one of the things I want to talk about um, as part of like it was not dealing with other things the stress and stuff that had happened that caused me to get ill. I was out of school for like 18 months, um, fell behind massively, all this rubbish. And when I was 16, I was like, no, screw it. I'm going after my dreams, playing to win. Um, so even though I was good academically, I moved to Barcelona, um, went to a tennis academy, made it to the professional circuit, never got that high because it's just tough with finances and other stuff. But I was starting to play tournaments, made main draw a few times, um, and then I destroyed this ankle, so went off to university in America. So first in Florida and then University of South Carolina, number one international business school. Did that, did that completely terminate your you know, career as a professional athlete? No, it did. well, when I transferred schools, um, the coach was retiring. It's a bit of a long story, but basically um, I had a decision at a certain point. The NCAA said I was ineligible for my last season, so I had to like decide of whether – okay, do I just try and finish my degree or do I try and go back on tour after still being a bit injured and all this other stuff? And one day I was just like, okay, no, it's time for the next chapter. Um, this is kind of done at this point, uh, which was a really tough time. So I know some men like struggle with like vision and purpose and other stuff. I was on a call today with one of the community members. And that was a time where for like 15 years of my life, all my whole vision was tennis player, tennis player, tennis player. And losing that was like such a tough like depressing time um and it ended up breaking up a long distance relationship which again thank goodness because it's not really a relationship as you say but it all just came tumbling down uh when that happened got it and how old were you when you switch gears from um you know professional tennis to going back to school so well sir so i when i got injured um, when I was on the professional circuit, I went and got a scholarship. And so I was still playing tennis for a few years after that. It was, so it was only my last year when I was about 23 because I was a year delayed going into a university. But I got through it quite quickly. So I'll have been about 23 when it was like my last year. And, okay, we've got to find a different path in life. Yeah, it's interesting because, um, you know, your plan A was professional tennis player. And I remember when I was about 19, I think my plan A at the time was to be a, a RAF fighter pilot in Harrier jump jets because it was because it was shortly cool. after the uh, Falkland War had ended. And, you know, I went to go and apply and it's like, um, no, you're too tall and you can't fit in the cockpit. So sorry, we can't have you. But if you want to be a grunt and run around with a gun and, you know, dodge bullets, you can do that. So yeah. that was a pass for me and I had to go into plan B. But it was but it was a bit of a blow to the head. I mean, like, you know, when you have these life changing events, I think that one of the skills that guys need to learn and need to learn as soon as and early as possible even is how to pivot and adapt when 
when the course changes for you, you know, when the ebbs and flow kind of move, because that's what life is. You know, I was actually thinking about it this morning because I usually go for a stroll um, through this wooded area in the morning just to just to kind of clear my mind. And, you know, some people will sit around and meditate for me that 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 two kilometer strolls kind of like my meditation. I was thinking about how life just continuously throws things at you. It's like, you know, the seasons will change. It's it's icy one day, so it's slippery as hell and I'm almost wiping out. And the next day it's like wet and the snow's kind of melting. So I always find it's interesting to hear other guys' story when life throws a curveball and they're like, all right, plan A's dead. Let's beat it with a stick behind the bar and bury it six feet under and call it a day. We've got to figure out the next thing. So how did you move on to the next thing? Like what was the strategy after that? Was it like the corporate job? What did you want to do from there? Uh, yeah, it was cry and be sorry, feel sorry for myself and play a lot of online chess to try and keep that competitive spirit um, up. I, can't, I noticed in some of your videos, the chess board behind you, I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't go near online chess. I'm so addicted to it because it brings back all those memories of like, ah, I need to beat something and do something here. Compete. But basically, base, you're a competitor, right? Yeah, definitely a competitor. Yeah. Um, it's it's just such a drive for so many guys. Um, even in a mastermind I joined recently, I um, I messaged the main guy and I said, we should create a little side pool where everyone competes for like their entry of who gets the best results and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I yeah, thrive on competition. But the way I dug myself out is I was already doing lots of stuff anyway. Um, like I uh, started a student run hedge fund and other things and got to meet Warren Buffett because of that, which was pretty cool. Um, and ask him a couple of questions, but the I, I knew I was going to try and get like a job in either investment banking or wealth management or something. Even though I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I'd come from single mom household, but she'd been an entrepreneur and built a businesses. Same with my dad when he was around for the first few years, he was an electrical contract on like massive ships, and so I'd always seen that like freedom side of things, um, or what should be freedom. Uh, if you set it up properly. And so I thought maybe if I know the guys with the money later, I'll be able to get into that. But all my network was in America. And so even though Merrill Lynch and these other companies wanted to hire me, there's just no visa that they could give me. So I came back to the UK with my tail kind of between my legs and had to start again uh, in November, which is a terrible time to look for a job. Got it. So what brought you to where you are today? That sounds like you're about your mid 20s around that time. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been, um, so towards the end, so 23, 24, 2012, so yeah, 23 and a half, basically. Um, and so what happened was, if you can share my screen um, uh, now, I'll let bring me it up. Got it ready, I'll put it up. Yeah, I'm re ready and I'll make it full screen. Can you see that? Yep, you're, you're good. Yeah, so, so basically when I came back, I was like, well, I can only answer job boards for so many hours of the day and try and ask for stuff. So I started like putting a book together around certain personal growth stuff and other things and just my story, like completely crazy, but at least taking some action. And in doing research for that, I came across this guy called Dr. Ron Watkins, who with all the personal growth stuff and things I've been learning, this guy just made Tony Robbins and other look like kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So I sent an email um, asking if I could, you know, work with them closer. And basically they kept saying, no, no, no. So here they said, look, it's not worth, it's a waste of time visiting Romsey uh, where they, they were. However, I'd be happy to speak on the phone. And from there, I just kept begging my way in until the point that I offered to um, move to the other end of the country and work for free for a month to prove what I could do for them. So I wasn't taking no for an answer. And then I finally got that job. They allowed me to be part of their team. And that just led to a whole host of things of being able to, they worked exclusively with like the CEOs of billion dollar companies and executives of those companies, as well as training the Olympic coaches and athletes um, in the UK. So I was getting to coach those types of executives on the things that we'll share a little bit in a minute um, about like um, their own development and their own, um, emotional intelligence and mindset and strategy and leadership, but also what was really fun for me, obviously given my background, getting to work with the coaches and the athletes and help our athletes do better. Um, so this is where I'm with the Paralympic shooting team and stuff like that. So one thing kind of led to another, um, and I worked there for three years, but then they solely wanted to focus on the like big executives and I wanted to bring the stuff out to more people. So I wanted, it, I just didn't think it was fair that, 
charging insane prices just to learn uh, this stuff. So I wanted to bring it to more people. So I started my own business in um, it would be May 2016. Was there like um, a, a, a switch that flipped in your mind where you started to do something? I often call these like a frying pan of the forehead moment where it's very obvious that you're on the right path and that you need to double down on it. Like, was there a moment for you where you kind of like took a smack to the forehead and said, oh, uh, there's a big opportunity here. I need to double down on it. Um, I just, I think the big thing was the, I'd always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And even within that business, I was being entrepreneurial. And I was saying to them like, look, pay like, don't pay me much, um, but have my money tied to me building the online side and maybe one day I'd get equity. And as they just kept limiting the freedom and cutting, even though they're absolutely wonderful people, they just they they kept putting blocks in place of what I needed to do. And so it got to the point where it was just, the, I guess the frying pan was just like, what the hell am I doing here? As much as I would like to be part of this group of people in this team, like I'm capable of so much more. And my life, like at 25, um, 26, whatever I'll have been at that point, um, there's just, I should be so much further ahead. And I know I'm capable of more and I'm getting my wings clipped here, I feel. So I need to go find out on my own whether I'm just an arrogant, cocky young kid or whether I can go and actually make this happen. So and that was what kind of hit me. And I wanted to ask you as well, because at the time, because I know like in your 20s, you know, if you're a healthy guy, you got strong levels of, you know, it's testosterone. You're, of course, interested in women. What was your experience at that time, you know, with women in your life? Like, were you dating? Were you in an LTR, a long distance relationship? Like, what did you do? Yeah. So sometimes um, I was dating. Sometimes I almost went a bit monk mode. And then um, I had a serious uh, one itis. Um, for a girl, just as I left the company, uh, met her, and she was actually ideal. So I kind of got her into that company. And there's a whole massive, long, just tragic story about her ending up with someone else that's completely different to me that um, was like a close friend of me losing like everything, like, losing like being able to stay in touch with that company, best friends, closest friends in the neighborhood, not wanting to be like in the city I was in. It mm -hmm. was just, it was just nasty. I could have done with the, uh, the red pill and everything I know back then. Was that your trauma moment? Was that your red pilling moment, or was it something after that? I think it probably was. So there's other stuff that later that led me to you. Um, so I was later on my travels. I'd met um, a single mom, so that kind of led me to your channel a few years ago. Um, just looking at that, and again, the freedom side. But I would say that was the thing that just like exploded my mind uh, because before that, I had like the okay, I want to meet someone long term, be perfect, and I need to, I'm going to be this type of man to attract this type of person, and all this attract this type of man. It was like just stuff that is crazy when you think about it, mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't make a difference, and that you think that they would want or, and it's not even what they would want it's what you think you it's what you want in the girl that you think then they're projecting onto the guy and it's just so wrong it was just a huge blind spot so in essence it was actually a really good experience because it freed me up to this whole new possibilities yeah i find most guys at some point some some struggle with it i mean i had a i had a uh request a topic that I published yesterday from a guy that basically flew all the way to Iceland only to get dumped over there by his one itis and he was it. still yeah he was still pining for it for years afterwards even though he's super successful making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and going out with mm -hmm. cheerleaders and stuff but yeah. um yeah getting over that hump is a yeah is a big big part of of uh, kind of kind of dealing with life as a guy and learning how to deal with rejection it's 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 guys that struggle to deal with rejection um and moving past it you know especially with women that that um you know that can get stuck in that vicious uh cycle and go to bad places but anyway um yeah carry on with the business uh and how you kind of started to build this new life for yourself after university and this uh placement through the united states yeah so the um my like i said my business started may 2016 struggled the first few months was trying everything literally everything then finally we got a breakthrough in kind of like october time i was just sharing a life planning tool uh, with someone and someone asked like oh can you do you sell that do you buy it and once that like product fit 
um, happened. I knew what I needed to do with ads and other stuff. So I just started scaling, scaling the business up basically. And very quick, so you can see there October 16 is when we had the first products. And I, the end of September, I'd taken out like a 30,000 pound loan just to keep myself going and afloat because I'd invested in all these programs and paid credit cards and all sorts. And But that's when it really took off. And so within that, the first um, the first year, in essence, uh, we made uh, almost three, almost four hundred thousand uh, dollars. But once we'd actually hit oil, if you will, in October, it was almost even more than that. So a year later, after starting business, we're having like thirteen thousand dollar days and things like that. Mm. Um, so we were able to scale up very, very quickly once we finally found what what was working and like what we needed to do and got all the testing done on the pages and things like that. And that just kind of carried on from there, building this personal growth product, helping over 20,000 people. So you can see here, this was back in um, 2019. Uh, was that the uh, StriveX product that you, or was this the beginning of StriveX, the one that you showed me a couple of years ago? Yeah, so the if you can see on this graph here, like October through May is not Strive X. That's just my dreams designer, dreams dashboard, like performance lab stuff, getting people to perform better, control their emotions, get clear on their goals, like some extra like goal setting research, that kind of stuff. And then in May was when we launched Strive X. That's when that you can see those spikes going up. So we did about $75,000 launch or something mm. um, right then. And it was funny because May 12th, is when I left the UK and I was such an idiot. I did the launch, like I started the launch something like a week before I left and renounced my citizenship. So I ended up paying something like 30,000 pounds in taxes that I didn't need to, but if I'd have done a week later, um, wouldn't have been a problem. So that sucked, but mm. at least we were making some good money. And then so from May 17 onwards was StriveX and just building that brand. And then later it transitioned into uh, working with coaches, Elevate Coaching, and the Business Coach Academy. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That brings you to today, right? Yeah. So then we um, we hit $100,000 months and stuff like that. But not What's sure that like when you're time. kind of going from, you know, the corporate guy or the, you know, starving tennis player that doesn't have the, the financial means to, you know, chase that oh. uh, path to like a life where you're making, oh, okay, well, you know, I made $13,000 one day or I made $100,000 a day. Like, was there a moment in time where you thought that this could never happen? Well, I've never made $100,000 a day. That's yet to come, but $100,000 okay. a month. Yeah, it was um, was a nice experience. Um, I always had this belief in my mind that I would get to um, these levels. It was just, so I think the, and I think a lot of guys can have that belief early on and then when they hit so many obstacles and they try so hard and guys i know a lot of guys who do like we, we get the guys who don't put in the effort but i know a lot of people who follow your channel they're trying really hard and they're just not getting the results they want or deserve and i remember just one day like before things really took off just calling up like my mom to try and like just ask about something it might be even to borrow money or something like that to keep going and um, I just couldn't hold it in anymore. It was like breaking down, like I don't know what to do um, anymore. So I suppose on those days, like thinking about earning $100,000 in a month or getting people paying you like $40,000 for a product like we do now um, was just insane. And it's like looking back, you you forget those times all, almost. And you now you're just thinking, okay, well, how do we make $250,000 a month and stuff like that? So I think quite often you forget how far you've come. But there's certainly days where it's just like, I, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just mm -hmm. so stuck. And there may be guys listening to this where they've tried everything. And this is really what I want to talk about um, as we get past in a minute. Like, well, you just like, I've tried everything. Um, I don't even dare have goals or visions anymore because I feel like I've tried everything and I don't know what to do. So I've definitely had those days. So how did you abandon that, um, you know, that doom and gloom sort of mindset? Cause I mean, you had a mindset shift, you had an identity re-engineering, um, you know, you built multiple online businesses, you completely revamped your dating life. We're not going to talk about that in significant detail, but I can promise you guys, based on the posts that I've seen in the community for the last couple of years, Xander has some incredible freaking receipts. But uh, um, yeah, talk about those throw 
you know, sorry, those four points of mindset, identity, re-engineering, building the online business and the shift in your dating life from, I mean, you went from horrible crippling one-itis to you're pretty much spoiled for choice with everything that you do. Um, yeah, and it was really just getting back to um, actually applying the tools I'd like be I knew and had been learning and actually applying them to myself and then understanding that if I was going to make achieve these goals, I had to have a different level of understanding of what was in my blind spots. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm copying this person's program or process or other stuff, but I'm not getting the results. Either I can think, oh, I'm so special that I'm the only person it doesn't work for, or I can see what I am actually missing and screw this. I, I know I deserve a life and I'm going to make a life, whether I deserve it or not, I'm going to make a life and carve my way to be the way I want. And it was just a pursuit of that, um, that goal. And you kind of mentioned that competitiveness. I feel like it's almost a competitiveness with yourself. You're like, sometimes when you, when you compete on the tennis court or over the chessboard, you get this sense of like, oh, I'm, I'm so much better than you. I'm going to show you exactly how it is. And I feel a lot of guys, and this is how I felt, just feel as though I was, I should be so much more. And so it was consistently thinking that and then deciding that, okay, I'm not going to stay where I am. I'm not going to accept mediocrity. I need to actually look at what I'm missing because clearly something's going on. I'm not so special that it can't work for me when it's working for loads of other people. So I need to figure out what is missing for me um, and how I move forward from there. Okay. And how did you move yeah. into that? How did you figure that I, part out? Yeah. So it was actually just learning a lot and looking at um, a lot of the things I'd done at Complete Coherence and then what I'd built after that was actually starting to dive deeper. So I don't know whether oh, let me, these are just some of the travel bits. Oh, here, hang on. So let me throw the, the screens back up. There you go. Uh, oh, I didn't even know the screens were off. There you go. Let me keep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Is that? You've done a uh, TEDx talk? Yeah, I did a TEDx talk. They messed up the audio, so I never published it. I've got the raw form. I tried to do like a dubbing voiceover, but it was about what can happen when you don't, uh, when you struggle to achieve your goals, whether you let it deter you or whether you develop forward. And I made some like comments about how mm. you, um, how you have to develop. In the community that's done a uh, TEDx talk. Uh, DJ's the other one. I don't know if you remember him from a few years ago. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that when I was in Serbia. I was asked to speak there. I was just visiting a co-living space. Mm -hmm. Same when I was I was asked to speak at the Business for Good conference in Miami. And then the top left one um, is in the UK at the Entrepreneurs Network conference. How um, is Entrepreneurs Network different from Entrepreneurs Organization? Because that was an organization that I spent a lot of time in. I'm just curious for myself on that, actually. It, it's probably just a British version started by a guy um, called James Sinclair, who is okay. absolutely hilarious. He used to be like a party clown, but he's actually an amazing businessman. And he wanted to bring more people, um, like entrepreneurs together. So it's probably just a new version of that. Got it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me skip all this. This was the traveling. We can skip over this, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Cool. Yes, that's where I am now, Cape Town. So the question was around like this mindset body, um, like how did I transform this mindset body, women, money, women stuff? So is it okay if I go into an exercise with the guys now, Rich, to kind of show them what happened for me? Yeah, is this something that they can follow along with and do themselves or? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I thought I'd like to try and do that if that's okay. Fire away, go ahead, it's all yours. Okay. Cool. So um, anybody, let me see if I can watch the chat as well as we're doing this. But basically, I'll, um, guys. I'll keep an eye on the chat for you. So if there's okay, a, great. a question that pops up, then I can just stick it up on the screen like that. Yeah. So this is what I did, but I didn't do this with the understanding I have now. So this is the improved version, if you will. And this is the thing when we teach our business coaches, even though we teach them like hundreds of different things, this is always what they come back is like the most useful in essence. Now, I've changed it to be specific for guys. But if you think about guys and what they want to achieve or what they need in life, there's kind of four quadrants. You've got mindset, you've got body and physical goals, you've got your money and finance life, and then you've got your women, dating, sex life. Okay? So hopefully the chat kind of agrees with that. Yeah, you've got hobbies and other stuff outside of that. But 
if you're missing any one of these, like life can suck a little bit. You got plenty of money, but you can't get any women. Sucks a little bit. If you got, you know, women, but you don't have your health, or if you feel like you don't have purpose, then that, you know. So these are, I think, the main ones in my view. Now, I'm going to give these different names. So the mindset is psychology, the body is physical, money is environment, and women is relationships. I don't want to get into all the boring academic stuff behind it, but this is based on the work of Ken Wilber, and he calls them the um, individual interior. That's the mindset. He calls the body the individual exterior. The money side, the, um, the collective exterior, and the relationship side, the... Uh, collective interior. So basically, we just found that these words come up over and over again in different languages. So it's a good way to view reality of like what needs to be there. So this is an exercise you can do to figure out maybe where your blind spots are, like what was missing for me. So the first thing is I just want you to pick a goal. So if you look at those four quadrants, just decide a goal. And we're not going to go into like the keys of goal setting, but quickly just to help you. Like make sure it's like present tense, specific and positive focus. So you don't be like, I want to stop smoking. Um, don't make it a negative, make it a positive. So it might be, I um, have an online business that earns $10,000 a month, okay? Or I have a perfect like one point V taper, golden ratio, 1.618. Whatever you want, I weigh 180 pounds. Mm. Just pick a goal. That's the first step. And quickly, we'll give you like a minute to do this, and Rich and I will talk as you do it. List out everything you need to achieve that goal. So this is where I was. So start doing that now. So I thought, felt I was doing absolutely everything to build my businesses, felt like I was trying to be the perfect guy to attract the right women and stuff like that and just not getting the results I want. And so I want you to take that goal and just list it all out. So I'll give a little bit of help as an example. You can do it for your goal, but just while people have time to do it. So let's say you wanted to build a $10,000 a month business. It's what a lot of people who um, I've worked with in the past want to do. Then maybe you need an online sales funnel. Okay, that's what most people talk about. Maybe you think you need a product. Maybe you know you're going to need some level of accounting software. Maybe you think you're going to need a community of some kind. So list all that out. Rich, what's going on in the comments? Um, well, we got some people saying gold looks good. Exactly. Um, you know, they're just kind of agreeing with it. You, you'll probably okay. find a lot will just pause or maybe be watching the rerun anyway. Okay, so cool. probably just let so, them pause it right down their notes. And then they can just resume. Perfect. Guys, so if you're watching this later, pause it. Take as long as you want to do it. And then we're just going to do the third step. And this is the final step of it. But it hopefully will bring some things to light. Now what you, what you want to do is you want to categorize your list into the quadrants. So the psychology, physical, so I'm going to show you. So let's say to build the $10,000 a month online business. So what most people will happen, and let's say yours was a fitness goal, you may have certain things like, okay, I need workouts, I need a nutrition plan. So just choose which one it relates to most. So if it's, for example, to build the $10,000 per month online business, Things like a scalable training product and website, they're quite physical, tangible things. Something like a high converting sales funnel, you could argue that's in the physical quadrant, but really you can't have a high converting one if it doesn't take into account what everyone else is doing. Same with your unique offer. And then like an engaged community, for example, you, that involves other people. So you can see this takes a bit of practice, but you can start to separate out the different things. And what you may find is, is that you've got most of your things in one quadrant, okay? And this is what a lot of online training programs do, which is what we'll get to in a second. Um, I don't know if you want to comment in the chat whether you had most in one particular quadrant or if you've got any questions about it. Uh, no um, questions showing up, just some comments here. Okay. Jeff says, women in mindset for me, goal of re refocusing priorities for me. So, um, yeah, cool. you'll probably find that that you're going to yeah. hover in a certain area. I mean, probably around yeah. money and women for the most part, I think guys, especially if they've got their head screwed on, right? Yeah, this is slightly, um, like I'm trying to go past the money and women. I was just trying to show those four mm -hmm. of how they relate to these four. So now you could have a specific woman goal and now we're using these four quadrants again. So basically my point is most of the time you're missing one quadrant. 
So let's say you miss the psychology of building the business. You're going to need a ton of focus. You're going to need a ton of energy. And if you haven't considered those things, and this is what most online programs don't consider. They never even teach people who've never been entrepreneurs before how to have the level of focus and dedication and energy that they need to build that. Maybe you missed good accounting in the physical side, business process, affiliates, great branding. And so what you have to do is you have to start figuring out where the quadrants are that you're missing in essence because otherwise it's like a chair with three legs you know it's unstable the goal you're trying to achieve or it's like a car with a flat tire is you're just going to move slowly because you're always going to be fighting it so maybe i should actually jump ahead to some some examples of this rich before i share the next bit yeah go ahead. Um, I love how prepared you are for this, man. I, um, you know, I was expecting us just kind of chop up some ideas and talk about your unplugging, you know, from your old we can do uh, that. conditions back over to the alpha side of thing. And uh, no, 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 I want you to stay on this because this is because this is amazing. Like, I love the way that you organize stuff, right? Okay, cool. So, guys, let's let's actually take it. I was going to show you something else first, um, which I think will really help break this down. But I want to kind of keep that away from you until. I don't want to give you the answer ahead of the time so this can unfold properly. So let's say your ideal body, this quadrant approach, right? So let's say you decide a cutting or bulking program and you buy it um, like Athlean X or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And that program teaches people how to lose fat, gain muscle, get that perfect V taper. But they do it from a diet mentality side. So I know someone who's a leader in the manosphere struggled to lose weight for ages and they got real results with, I think it's called Noom or something, which is all focused on the diet mentality. They hardly touch nutrition or anything. So they're all focused there. So you buy that program, you're all excited, but and you're learning all this new stuff about diet mentality. So you're getting your psychological quadrant fixed. But then what happens if you are surrounded by, like the family's got bad foods, and so you're surrounded by them all the time. So your environment sucks, you know? These, these are always talked about in different ways, but no one ever really puts them together about why they're all important together. So your environment quadrant isn't stabilized. Then let's say you start doing fasting or you do some other stuff, and now you're getting all these dopamine rushes. Or at the same time, you decide to quit watching TV because you make all these habits. And where you used to get your dopamine rush, your brain's now going, no, we need dopamine. Get something sugary. So you've got all these neurological cravings. Or that you're scared of others seeing you fail because you've tried this before. So you're unstable in the, relation, in the relationship with others quadrant. So you can see how this new program that... You're now telling you it's not it's your fault that you failed because everyone else got results. It's not really your fault. You've got all these other areas the program never covered to help you actually get what you needed. And what often happens is the program creator didn't do this deliberately. They just had a shift in all four quadrants finally. They, they hit a brick wall and they finally got over those other things, but they latched on to one particular aspect making the change. And that ends up being a chair with three legs. It's a car with a flat tire. So you'll either get no change at all or it'll not last. It'll come tumbling down because you'll just grind through it for a few months. So for yeah, the change... Just to, kind of, just to kind of chime in here for a second, just to put it in perspective, I see a lot of guys um, on YouTube, especially in the pre-roll ads. I've, I've seen these ads run on my channel and other channels. Sometimes it's like wingman women selling... Uh, courses. Sometimes it's like pickup artists selling, hey, you know, if you regurgitate these three lines or this one special text, you know, you're going to get her to come over and boink your brains out in 15 minutes. Um, the thing that you got to understand about all of these things is, you know, you can have the perfect delivery system, the perfect regurgitate these lines and follow up with this text. And after she does this and do that, and I'm not a big fan of these, you know, prescriptive A, B, C, D, E. I'm more a fan of the mindset component, which is why I really like the way that you've structured this here as an example, because like somebody pointed out earlier, this will work for pretty much everything in your life. But yeah, uh, a three-legged chair is utterly useless. And that's what a memorize these three lines and these four, four text program is really all about. Um, if you haven't got your, you know, your mindset, your physical you know, your environment, all the other stuff, haven't got all your ducks lined up, it's all going to collapse on itself. And it's no surprise why some guys don't get good results when they're buying these, hey, get my wingman course or some shit like that, right? 
Yeah, exactly. And I'll I'll touch on, I want to unpack the manosphere a bit about where guys are focused on not just one quadrant, but even a subsection of one quadrant. Maybe we should go to that now, or I can just show a few more examples. Yeah. Which whatever, you decide, whatever you decide's best, you know? We got, yeah, I'll uh, just go. we got another half an hour to go, so. Cool. I'll just go quickly through this. Let's say the build a business one, because a lot of guys I've worked with, or even when... Um, didn't used to work with guys when it was just a full personal growth brand. A lot of people wanted to start their own business. So let's say you buy a business startup or business growth program course from like Sam Ovens, Alex Becker, somebody like that. So they give you all the business growth ideas and what to do. Brilliant. You're all excited. You've got all this stuff. But then you hit these limiting beliefs around money that limit your success. So now you maybe you think you don't deserve money or that money or wealthy people are bad. So that's an obstacle in your psychological quadrant. You also got low energy, so you struggle to motivate yourself for the challenges ahead because you're so tired. That's a physical quadrant thing. Let's say you fear that if you do get wealthy and successful, you'll lose your family and friends because you'll be more successful than them. Then now you've got a problem there. Or maybe if you've got a partner, you feel guilty for working on your business when you should be spending time with them, should be being the belief you created in your mind. So you again, you've got this great course, and you're not getting results and you're blaming yourself, but it's not really completely your fault when you didn't know all this other stuff. They just told you, oh, this is all you needed to do, when actually there's quite a few different things you have to get in place that made the shift. So maybe someone else who's selling that business growth course, they finally just said they hit such a brick wall. Maybe they were like me where they were 30,000 pounds, taking out loans of 30,000 pounds. And they said, I don't even care what the Facebook comment says. I need to advertise and I need to earn some damn money. So I'm getting over that limiting belief. They just did that, but they don't put that in the course because they think it's how they structured the image on the Facebook ad, okay? So this is where it causes massive problems. It's a car with three flat tires. It will slow you down. Another one really fast, improve self-confidence. So psychological quadrant, that's where you want. You want to build better beliefs. But what happens if you've got a fight or flight response triggered too easily? Then you've got a problem in the physical quadrant because you're feeling anxious or on high alert all the time. What if you've got an angry boss um, that's putting you down or always putting you on edge in the job you're in? It causes and de problems and destabilizes it all the time because all the quadrants are going to affect each other, okay? So hopefully you can see now how most mainstream products that oversimplify things. And the only reason I want to share this is a lot of guys get into so much guilt and blame. They're not where they want to be. And yeah, we probably can all do more, but it's also not entirely your fault because just, and it's not the program creator's fault. They just don't know this stuff. I was very unique to get an insight, like peek behind the doors of working in this leadership development company that really helped uncover this. So I just thought it would be useful to share that stuff. Um, and you may have experienced that in the past. Um, have that. I don't know in the comments if anyone's done that. You know, maybe you've spent thousands on courses and self-development or marketing stuff or business stuff, and something just keeps holding you back or you haven't got the results that you really want um, and know you deserve. Yeah. Um, can you can you take us over to the Manosphere stuff so that it kind of... Uh... Yeah. I'm really excited to a bit strongly with these guys because I know that they're more more familiar with that than they are anything else for the most part. Yeah, I'm super excited to share this. Um, so this is something I just created recently to break this concept down more. Mm -hmm. So we've obviously got the mana sphere. Just for the time being, I want to replace it with the uh, the mana square. So <laughs> if we have these four quadrants that. Hopefully we can all agree. Maybe we should have got more agreement. I can't see the chat while I'm managing screens and all sorts. Hopefully we can all agree these are the like four really important pillars for men. Yeah, okay. Big, yeah, the big, okay, good. Rich, we'll use you as the, the king and leader, and you can uh, verify it all to whether I'm talking nonsense or not. Yeah. And so basically, if we now um, – oh, so we've got psychology, physical relationship, environment. But now let's dive a little bit deeper. We can break mindset down into that like even further. So if we go into like the psychology side of mindset, so we've gone even deeper, we could look at things like mindfulness, emotional intelligence, other stuff. On the physical side of mindset, if that makes sense, it can get a little tricky, imagine this. You've got kind of self-image. On the relationship with others side of mindset, you've got tribe. On the environment and like what it means to be part of something bigger in the mindset, you've got kind of purpose and meaning. 
So we can break it down further on the body stuff. We've got performance, health, longevity, aesthetics. So you can see how aesthetics is part of the body quadrant, but it kind of relates to the relationship with other side because the aesthetics is what you want to be to attract the women that you want, if that makes sense. So that quadrant there, I don't know if you can see my mouse, of body kind of relates to the relationship with other side here. Longevity kind of relates to you surviving in your environment, that kind of thing. Same with money. We can break it down into, okay, well, you've got your expenses, your budget, you know, biggest expenses, tax. Probably for most people, you've got your income, you've got your investments, you've got your debt. You've got, and then in the woman quadrant, you've got things that people talk about. You've got your frame. You've got game that you need to be able to do. You've got being able to actually date and get to sex. You've got the red pill, SMV type stuff in here as well. So you can see the red pill stuff is in the environment section of the woman part, if that makes sense, um, because they're helping you understand and navigate the, the environment and what's happening there. So this is where it might start to make more sense and why we struggle. So if we take the mindset quadrant, now obviously for each quadrant, there is so many different people you can choose from. I've just chosen some very well-known ones and who I consider very, very like good in many ways at what they do. Um, so for example, the mindfulness, you've got people like Sam Harris for the tribe section. Obviously we've got our very own Richard Cooper, who's building you know, the 1%, the entrepreneurs in cars and everything like that. And even though like many of these guys will do multiple things, so Rich talks about business and all this other stuff, I've just tried to give the ones where they are like the top dog in, in essence, um, or at least what they focus on the most. So Lewis Ho's example, wrote a book about the mask of masculinity. And whether you think that it's good or not, his focus is the self-image side of things in that book a lot. Jordan Peterson, like Purpose and Meaning, on the body side, so the performance, you've got people like Tim Ferriss, Health, Dr. Michael Greger, created nutritionfacts.org, Ben Greenfield on longevity, aesthetics, you've got so many. You've got Athlean X, you've got all the fitness people. I just had to choose somebody. But I'm just trying to show you, as an example, you go and buy Jeff Cavalier's Athlean X program to learn how to build, like, build the body you want, and it's a small section of one core pillar that isn't taking into consideration everything you want as a man. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it at all because it's great stuff. You should just go in there with realizing you need to support it with the other quadrants. So if we look at the money one on the expenses, we've got people like Andrew Henderson of Nomad Capitalist, seven people on taxes. Alex Becker teaching about online programs and doing that. Graham Stephan on investments. Dave Ramsey, debt and budgeting and all that kind of good stuff. And then the women's side, you've got guys like Black Dragon, Caleb Jones on the sex, dating. And again, Caleb talks about all kinds of stuff and um, business and all sorts, but he's brilliant at that kind of section. I'm just showing you some examples. You've got Rolo on the red pill, Paul Benjamin on the frame thing, uh, who's part of the 1%, who's absolutely fantastic. John so um, Sommez, I also had Myron Gaines down there in the game section. I didn't know where to put everybody. So there's lots of other people and choose your favorite one. And some of them include multiple mod, multiple quadrants, but some are very focused and niched as well. But the point is, is you need to realize that if you're going to get to where you want, that you have to take like a full quadrant approach. And hopefully what you we did at the start, the exercise, you saw that there are blind spots to what you're doing. And so it's really, really important to be able to see that and realize that that's what you're going to need to do in order to get to where you want to be. Um, otherwise, it's the chair with three legs. It's the car with three flat tires, like we've been saying. Um, Rich, sorry, I feel like I've got too excited. No, 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 too that's, much time no, that's that great. Stuff. I mean, basically, there's four quadrants, but there's 16 in total because each quadrant should include about four themselves. So you're never going to get everything you want from. I mean, I'm never going to give you everything that you want, right? Like people sometimes ask me to talk about investments, and I'll be honest with you, I've made a lot of money. I've lost some money too. Um, you know, so there's certain areas that I won't even touch on. So yeah, I think that's a good way to sort of illustrate that. Yeah, no, not even, but this is all fractal. So you could now go into the income one and pick yeah. out four more things you have to do there. Yeah, yeah. It just keeps going deeper and deeper. So at some point you've got to stop, but at least this gives you the, 
okay, I need to be covering all my bases if I want to get to uh, where I want to go to. Oops, sorry, one second. That's, um, that's just some levels to see how you're doing where you're on track. But yeah, you have to, you have to at least understand. So you could go deeper and deeper. Um, so that's one thing. Oh, sorry. That's okay. You can yeah, stop can the pull, share, I think, yeah, for a bit. Pull that out of the screen. Um, okay, so we got like 15 minutes left. What else do we need to cover here that we haven't talked about yet so far with this unplugging? Because I mean, um, like you've 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 put this all together because I know that you've you've been working on structuring a course to guide guys in our community. Um, we talked about this a few weeks ago, and rather than doing this as a private learning event, I said let's you know let's put it on the outside and put it on the plane to win series because it really ties into the notion of what you've done yourself and how you've unplugged yourself and how you're building out you know that next version. Um, what else do you guys need to know? Kind of like leading up to this, uh, you know, performance changes, reinvention, the identity reengineering that we might not have hit on yet. Yeah, well, if I can share that level thing, um, if you can just share the screen for a second, this is the sure. last last slides, I promise. I'm sorry, I'm geeking yeah, yeah. out about uh, the, um, the slides. I got the stream yard here in the green room, so you're gonna have to switch over to the next page and I'll, and I'll plop it in. Okay. Uh, there you go. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, the alpha transformation ladder. Okay, go. Yes, so this is just kind of a, a simpler version of what's called the personal transformation model, which is based on like consciousness development and other stuff. Uh, but it's just a, a a way that I've been using with the uh, men to understand like where you are in your journey. So obviously, if before like I understood red pill or anything or um, just these, other, and you can be at different levels in different quadrants in essence. So some guys might be doing great on the business side, but like be completely blue pilled. So the first level is obviously you're just completely oblivious to what needs to happen like you not knowing things can be different or better in any way you just the what do you call it rich the plow horse um yep, like in the horse. relationships one woman like i was like okay i'm gonna try and look for one I'm woman hoping, yeah. stay with her for 80 years i'm gonna be the perfect guy in every way for her and provide for her and this it's like you don't even know there's a whole different world out there then you start to get your eyes open so start to see that there's other possibilities then what often happens when you start trying to transform and change your identity you get a little bit overwhelmed you get you set too many goals so this thing i just shared with you the 16 boxes like one thing a guy might go and do who's let's say they're new to the red pill they found your channel and then they come watch this video they might go and try and set like okay i'm gonna have 16 goals one for each area and they're gonna completely just kill themselves and they not know what to do next. They're not going to make any good progress in any of it and feel completely paralyzed. Um, so that doesn't work. And I, lots of guys who I speak to end up that way. So you have to be able to narrow your focus. You still want it to be holistic if you can, but you can't, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with it. Then you might start doing well in one area. So some guys do really well in business, but their game side of things and their dating life is completely screwed. Or the other side, you get these pickup artists who have got, like, can go and get any girl, but their finances are an absolute mess. <laughs> so, so as you're transforming, if you want to be the complete, like, whole package alpha, not to be able to attract and get your SMV up. I'm not talking about this, be the whole package and the six sixes. I'm talking about for you to have an awesome, uh, epping life. Okay, so don't I'm not talking about it of like, oh, be in balance and have the money and the looks and the other stuff to be able to do that. Like just have the money to be able to live how you want the business, have the freedom how you want. And if one of the things you want is to attract any girl you want, then that's the, the bonus of all of it. Um, and then, you know, you kind of on track, you know where you're going, how to get there, making progress fast. You just need to keep going. So you've got clarity on the goals, maybe the five year, three year, one year plan, you know, the best way to do it. It's built in holistically, so you're not sacrificing your health while building your business. And then at the top level, you just you love your life in all aspects. So I'd be curious for the guys watching this either now or later, which level they think they're at for the four quadrants. Um, yeah, so like that's... you might be in a women life. Like two years ago in the women life, I was overwhelmed. I was learning all this new stuff about multiple relationships and things like that. Um, yeah. And now I would say 
it, it's like a six it's like a seven compared to how it used to be but yeah i, I, I didn't even know what was possible yeah, yeah i totally feel you because it's like i feel like you know i'm in the top level of this uh transformation ladder myself and i know that there was a place in time where i was you know closer towards the bottom and there was a lot of work between then and now that got me there um, you got a question here from Kevin in the channel membership. He says, do you focus on one quadrant at a time or should you go through each quadrant, list it all out, then focus on whatever you feel is worse or try to tackle the easiest fixes and work up? So there's a few questions in there. So kind of kind of deal with those questions one at a time. Looks like there's three questions in there. Yeah, let, I'll turn off the screen and turn off the screen, Rich, so I can see the question. And then yeah. you do you focus now? on one quadrant at a time or should you go through each quadrant list it all out then focus whichever you feel is worst or try and tackle the easiest fixes and work up so kevin it, i think by your question it kind of depends on whether you're talking about whether you're doing like your holistic life goal setting or whether you're doing the quadrant approach to a specific goal so if you're doing like okay what do i want my life to be like five years from now then you don't want to just set a woman quadrant. Otherwise, you'll end up like the pickup artist guys broke. You got laid a lot, but you're now broke, you know, or something like that. And I'm not saying all the pickup guys are like that. But for your five-year, three-year, one-year plan, you want to do all areas, and then you've got to make sure they integrate together, um, you know, about how you feel, um, about how your money is and how your body is and all that stuff. And – what some quadrants might not be important to you, which is fine. Like there's different levels. You don't have to say, right, okay, I want to look like Jeff Cavalier in the body goal. No, you might just want you might just want to lose a bit of weight or stuff like that. So just pick your ideal for each of the areas. Um, don't have too many goals. But then once you actually get a goal, so let's say you've picked out the I want to have a million dollars in savings as a goal. Um, so that's obviously in your money quadrant when you were setting your whole life plan. Then apply the four quadrants to that. So, okay, what am I going to need to do? Right, well, I'm going to have to have discipline in the psychological quadrant. Um, I'm going to have to have an in a clear income source, um, probably a scalable one with business if you want to, and it, depending on your time frame. You're probably going to have to have an investment vehicle in the environment section. Relationship with others, you might need a financial planner. So then you can go through and look at all the things you need and find the blind spots there. So hopefully that makes sense there. Let's see the other one. List it out, then focus on whichever you feel is worse. Do you think that guys should be working on their weaknesses? Because one of the notions that I've come across is a lot of people and even corporations will spend a lot of time and resources trying to improve somebody's weaknesses. And what, what I find usually happens at the end of the day is you just end up with somebody with really strong weaknesses. Yeah, I, I don't really think that. I think you have to um, make sure you cover the blind spots that would hold you back, but I don't think you need to focus on like weaknesses. Um, I would be more in your camp, Rich, of focus on the strengths. Um, yeah, the ROI is far higher in my view. Yeah. Um, he's, got a, he's got a follow up here. Uh, he says, I feel like uh, it may be like paying off debt. Start, start with the lowest and pay it off, then work like a snowball effect. So I want to talk to that point for just uh, a minute okay. because that's a Dave Ramsey trope with his snowball effect sort of program. And I'm not a fan of it. In fact, I think it sucks to be honest with you. Um, but again, you know, from my experience in the world that I come from, like I worked in credit collections for 10 years, you know, I was a bill collector at one point, worked my way all the way up to a manager. So, um, I've seen all the programs that are out there. There's bankruptcy, there's uh, nonprofit credit counseling, for-profit credit counseling. There's people that try to get consolidation loans. There's programs that Ramsey offers like a snowball effect. And I can tell you without shadow of a doubt, the best way to tackle your debt is to settle it. Um, the company that I left a couple of years ago that I planned my exit from that my brother now runs, totaldebtfreedom.ca, they still do it. So if you're in Canada, you can hire that company to do it for you. Alternatively, I wrote a book in 2012 on how to do it yourself. Um, there is nothing in it for you to keep throwing interest payments, principal payments at something the bank's already written off their books. It doesn't improve your credit rating. It just costs you more money. The best way for you to tackle your debt is to settle it. So the books on Amazon is a Kindle. It's less than 10 bucks. Grab it. You can train yourself to do it yourself. It takes it takes some time and some work and you'll need to follow the instructions. But that is the cheat codes to getting out of debt as fast as possible without screwing up your credit. I can tell you that right now. Mm. Um, 
Did we miss anything on that other question? I think there was... Uh... Yeah, I just wanted to go. I see what Kevin's saying a bit more now. Um, I actually think there's almost a sequence to the quadrant a little bit, Kevin. Like, I don't think you're going to be able to go and fix your um, like woman life or money life if your mindset is completely... like, Or even your body life if the mindset is completely screwed, you know? So you'd probably have to start with mindset and like mindset probably comes to everything else. And then foundational as rich and other people have talked about um i think at certain conferences is like okay well you kind of need to have your body in place if you can't do the like the things in your committed to and you've got low energy then how are you ever gonna like build a business or have time or have the aesthetics to get the women so maybe it is like you say the um you find the easiest first and normally the not the easiest, but it's impossible to do the other ones if you haven't got the sequence right. So it kind of becomes the easiest to fix the mindset, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, sounds sounds pretty clear to my end anyway. Um, oh, by the um, sorry, the question Kevin followed up on was appreciate the information on debt relief. It, um, the name of the book is, uh, well, don't even search the name of the book because it's a stupid title, honestly. I wrote it like eight or nine years ago. Um, just go to Amazon, look up my existing book and then click the author and then go to my other ones. And there's a white cover. I think the title is enough is enough. The DIY debt settlement guide that your credit card companies don't want you to know about. So if you just search either DIY debt settlement on Amazon or just search for my author name, you should find it. Um, it's basically what my company does that I set up in 2003. It's just, Hey, you know, here's a DIY guide. Cause I know people like to do things themselves and try to tackle stuff that way. Um, we're coming up on the hour. I have to get ready for another call. I know you're a busy guy. So, I mean, we've dropped a lot here. I know that you've, uh, put the course together. You got a bunch of guys already enrolled from the 1%, um, and you're getting started with them. Uh, let me grab the link for it in case anybody is interested in. So the, the program that you've built around, uh, basically designing your own life. So it, it's, it's a, it's a re-engineer your life sort of thing. Like, you've taken all the lessons that you've learned for yourself and you've put it in a step-by-step -step sort of manual? Yeah, I haven't even put it into a manual yet. The key with this program is that it's the first time I've offered this in like three years okay, just so because like because I'm working with guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't want to do the pre-built. Like the guys are in the program, they get some of my old pre-builts for like that I built for Strive and for some of my business certification programs. But the key part is I actually want to mentor and work directly with guys and like this. And so we look at the quadrants and say, okay, let's look at what you need. And so it's more of a mentor program um, where we get on weekly calls and they they get the bits that they need from like what I've done to build my like online dating profile or manage my multiple relationships or to grow my investments or scale their business. Mm -hmm. And so it's much more hands-on than templated um, it may become templated in the future, uh, but for right now, I will actually want to work and answer questions directly with the people who are interested in, you know, getting some of the results I've managed to achieve for myself. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's very labor intensive. So, uh, cool here. I'll grab the link and I'll drop it in the chat. I got one more super chat. I got to grab here real quick before we go. Um, if you want to get Xander's stuff, the link is right there. I'll also pin it in the description and the top comment. Uh, B L T O. Where are you? I'm a rapper, but feel like that, feel that lifestyle is mostly based on impressing people. And I don't want to let that go. Should I keep taking the red pill? Do you, you want, want to answer, answer that? that Rich? <laughs> <laughs> who, who needs ownership? Who needs well, ownership? <laughs> based on impressing people. So the first, so I mean, the first thing that stands out to me on that question is impressing people. And I mean, I'm at the point of my life in my, you know, mid to late forties now anyway, where I could give a F about impressing people. Either you like me or don't, it doesn't matter to me. Like your opinion of me does not matter. And honestly, the sooner that you adopt that view on yourself and, and life in my estimation anyway, is the best way to go about it because you spend far more time on yourself and on your purpose and chasing excellence and worry a lot less what other people think of you. And when you start to realize yourself how little you think of others, you know, to begin with, you start to realize that others spend very little time thinking about you. So, um, yeah, ch chase excellence, not women. Keep taking the red pill. Uh, there's no finer way to understand the reality of the world in my view. So, yes, I would I would definitely, um, you know, make sure that you not just take it, but 
act it, live it. Make sure that with every interaction you have with your relationships, you know, with women, with business partners, with friends and all that sort of stuff, that that you approach it with a lens that that doesn't deal with the distortion, the plugged in beta societal programming bull crap, but unplugs from that crap and plugs into basically what my new book was built on, which is the unplugged alpha mindset. This one, it's on Amazon. Go grab it if you haven't read it. It's Kindle and print in most places of the world right now. Um, to answer that, well, let's get Elijah's here. Dumb question here, but is settling that the same as claim of bankruptcy? No. Um, in my book, I explain exactly why it's totally different and why it's far more advantageous uh, to claiming bankruptcy. There Now, there's a lot to kind of unpack with that, but there are times when bankruptcy makes way better sense. For example, if you have $100,000 worth of credit card debt, but you have no assets to your name, nothing you can possibly lose in the bankruptcy proceeding. It's a first time round bankrupt here in Canada. Anyway, a first time round bankrupt is very, very easy. It's not that expensive and it's relatively fast. Um, if you came to me and said, Hey, Rich, can you teach me how to settle debt? Or you came to my company, we would actually send you away and say, no, just go bankrupt. Um, so there are certain scenarios. So you can do some research on that. There's another channel that I have that's been out even longer than this one called just, just total debt freedom. And there's a lot of videos on there that I still, you know, try to upload at least once a week on. Um, that answers some questions around bankruptcy versus settling debt, doing it yourself and all that. So you can go check that out as well. Uh, but thanks for the super chat. And uh, Kev's got a question. I found it on Amazon. I don't see an option for paperback, only Kindle, right? I only did it on Kindle um, when I published that one. I'll probably never do it on paperback um, unless I have to rewrite the whole thing. So it's it, just grab the Kindle. You can get a Kindle reader on an iPad, a computer, a phone. Just grab the Kindle. It's the easiest way to go about it. Um, closing thoughts before we wrap up, Xander, you got anything else you need to drop people or where they can find you aside from the link that I dropped there? No, that's the link. Just the alpha playbook, um, dot com. It's like a, a new thing I've put together. I've just wanted to do it for a while because I've been sharing so much in the 1%. And like you said, it's labor intensive, but so I'm just doing it as a test. Like I have my other businesses still, but, um, it is, it's very, um, lucky almost the guys who were able to get access at this time and what i'm um, able to do and give because i just haven't shared this stuff but i've been able to create some pretty awesome results and i'm excited to even awesome results just with online courses let alone where i can directly work with people um so it should be fun i just encourage all the guys to think about the quadrants think about which level you're at in each of them and then making like a plan and what would your identity need to be to hit each level how would it need to shape and then do the work or yeah. come check yep. out the Alpha playbook and how I can help you shift that identity. That was one thing I wanted to say about the rapper comment. When you change, you've got to let go of stuff. You've got to let go of these limiting beliefs. You've got to let go of the person you used to be. You can't just like install the new one. You mm -hmm. have to let go of the blue pill stuff. Um, you have to let go of the limiting beliefs around money. You have to go um, some people too, right? I mean, there's going to be some people yeah. that are going to treat you like a crab in a bucket and try to pull you back and hold you back from being successful. And there's going to be people that you're going to have to leave behind. You might even have to keep some family members at arm's length when you kind of reinvent yourself and change your mindset because even even your closest family members, even closest friends will, will, will try to hold you back. They don't always want to see you succeed. So you have to be comfortable with letting not just the old version of you go, but even places, people, even, in, you, know, you know, the environment that you live in and maybe yeah. picking up and moving because um, making making dramatic changes in life is going to entail making some dramatic changes in life, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm fully behind Xander with what he deals with here. Um, I have a slightly different approach to the way that I do things where I like to paint a picture of like, if I'm at A and then B looks like that, then all I do is every day, if this is what B needs to look like for my life, I'll always make choices that are fully aligned with B. And I'm like water, you know, I'll always carve the easiest path to B. Uh, that works great for me. There's some people that need physical structure, quadrants, boxes, and strategy and one-on-one -on -one hand holding. I would definitely go to Xander. I know he's getting uh, a handful of guys in my men's group some positive results. And um, I don't know, maybe we'll have a future cast to kind of talk about how that's going for everybody. But I figured this was a better place to do it than do it privately because I know that this is so useful and we can talk about this publicly. It's not it's not something that we need to water down too, too much for the YouTubes of the world. But um, Xander has a pretty incredible life, man. He's, you know, when it comes to, uh, money and women specifically, I can, I can 
vouch for him 100 percent and tell you that without a shadow of a doubt this dude is spoiled for choice he has some of the hottest women i've ever seen and i'm not saying woman i'm saying woman meaning plural we'll we'll just leave it at that <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> um guys thanks for watching smash the like button i appreciate you if you've ordered um my book make sure you leave a review on amazon i'm i'm more so you know, concerned with this one and any follow-up work that I do to it. Although if you do have debt, the debt settlement guide is there as well. It's it's an easy read. You can do that as well in about a day too. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment below. Xander, brother, appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing some comments from the guys and chatting right. to them. Thank you for so much for having me.